A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. The Lord says, You Bethlehem Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God, and they'll and they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. Lexio Sainte Evangelii Secunde Matthaeum. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, 
into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The whole the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Heaven the harmony. Today, the birthday of Mary is truly a heartwarming and glorious feast day that has been celebrated in the church for at least eight centuries. The church celebrates the birthdays of two saints, St. John the Baptist and Mary, the mother of God. John the Baptist was considered to have been sanctified in his mother's womb when he leapt for joy at the presence of the Savior in Mary's womb. Mary, on the other hand, was preserved from original sin from the first moment of her conception. The birthday of John the Baptist is considered to be um, a miracle because his parents were very old when Elizabeth conceived. We do not know from scriptures much about the birth of Mary, but we are told that her parents were very old and beyond the childbearing age, and yet, because of prayer and fasting, God granted them the child. So there we have two great saints ushering in the birth of our Savior, anticipating the great work of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're not certain about Mary's place of birth. One tradition, of course, is that she was born in the same house in Nazareth where the Annunciation took place. We know nothing about her early life, but we can only assume that she was born into a rather normal-looking family. The houses of those days were probably made of mud brick, and Mary probably had chores similar to the rest of the young girls her age, would take her turn, for example, in grinding wheat and barley for flour and helping her mother bake bread, probably also in gathering nuts and grapes and fruits uh, for the table, and probably also helped her mother do the laundry and probably also went down to what is now known as Mary's Well to carry the water up to the home. So from all external appearances, except for a very keen observer, uh, Mary probably fitted into society almost unnoticed. Yet all of this changed abruptly when the angel Gabriel appeared to her asking her to be the mother of the Savior. Today's first reading from Micah is taken from uh, a period of time when the Assyrian army was occupying northern Palestine and also in Micah's time in the south, corruption reigned. We know that priests, prophets, and judges were accepting bribes, merchants were ripping off the people, and false places of worship were mixed in with Yahwistic ones. It was into this sinful mess that God, through the prophet Micah, promised a Savior would come to Bethlehem. He was to be the ruler of Israel, and he would shepherd his flock 
with the strength of the Lord. In the gospel, we, one of the gospels read on this day, we have the genealogy of Jesus going all the way back to Abraham. Hence the promise God made to Abraham that he would be the father of many nations and that from his descendants a ruler would come forth who would establish an everlasting kingdom is now being fulfilled. While Mary herself was preserved from original sin, her ancestors were not. We see from this long line of ancestors that Rahab, Rahab, for example, was an adulteress, or rather she was a prostitute. And also we know that David was both a, uh, an adulterer and also a murderer. Yet Christ was born of a virgin into the midst of a sinful world to be its savior. Today we celebrate the birthday of God's masterpiece, Mary, the mother of the Messiah. Today we celebrate the fact that God chose to come into a sinful world through a woman preserved from all sin. St. Andrew of Crete perhaps gives us the best description of this feast. He tells us, quote, This radiant manifest coming of God to men most certainly needed a joyful prelude to introduce the great gift of salvation to us. It's almost as if Andrew is saying, the birth of the Son of Man is so great that we need to kind of let mankind know ahead of time how great it is by sanctifying John, the forerunner of Jesus in the womb, and by preserving his mother from original sin from the very beginning, so it enables us to rejoice ahead of time. The present festival, he goes on to say, the birth of the mother of God is the prelude, while the final act is the foreordained union of the word made flesh, end of quote. In preserving Mary from the stain of original sin, God is already filling us with a joyful expectation of victory over sin, even in our own lives. God is letting us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is coming on the scene to bring us into freedom. The sinless vir in the sinless virgin, we have hope for all of mankind. God's promise to Abraham has just taken a giant leap forward. Mankind has only known a sin-riddled world. Now God is about to establish a grace-filled world where, whereby man can receive the fullness of grace, divine help to overcome sin and to come into freedom. St. Andrew goes on to say, quote, Today the virgin is born, tended and formed and prepared for her role as the mother of God who is the universal king of all the ages, end of quote. On the one hand, we rejoice that Mary has already been given the victory over sin. That gives all of us hope for what's in store for us. On the other hand, the savior is born of her is our ticket to freedom and eternal life. And that's pretty good news. <laughs> The more the holiness of God attracts us and inspires us, and the more we see our own sinfulness, the more we look to Mary, our mother, and our hope. I always rejoice when I see somebody else doing something so much better than I can. So, for example, I can't sing very well. And so when I see, uh, when I hear a great singer, I truly rejoice. Well, consider, can certainly, that is why it is such a joy to have a great devotion to Mary. She knows how to do it. She knows what great suffering is, is like, um, and she handles it so beautifully and without sin in the, great in the great moments of her life. Look at the beauty of the Annunciation scene and see how she handled this surprise announcement with so much faith. After all, <laughs> It certainly interrupted her plans for a married life with Joseph. 
Look at the beautiful way in which she caps off her pregnancy by traveling on a donkey 100 miles, nine months pregnant, in the midst of winter to give birth to her child in a stable on a cold winter night, and he is our Savior. When an angel tells Joseph they are to leave for Egypt immediately, we hear no complaints from Mary living in a strange land among foreigners. Don't you and I envy <laughs> the way she handled all of this? I do. Through all of this, she is already modeling for us the blessings her son will bestow upon us by his passion and death. St. Andrew goes on to say, Therefore, let all creation sing and dance and unite to make a worthy contribution to the celebration of this day. Let there be one common festival for saints in heaven and men on earth. Let everything, mundane things, and all those above join in festive celebration. Today, this created world is raised to the dignity of a holy place for him who made all things. The creature is newly prepared to be the dwelling place for the Creator. And finally, I just want to pay a personal tribute to Mary in my life. Once when I was making an eight-day retreat, I was assigned to do four one-hour periods on the Passion of Christ. I just completed ten verses of the agony in the garden, and I got so much consolation out of that, I thought, I won't be able to contain the consolation of these 70 verses over four hours, right? Wrong. <laughs> because for four hours, I knelt there looking at the crucifix, and nothing was happening. And I was ready to say, God, are you taking a siesta? <laughs> don't you see how hard I'm working, and you don't seem to care? <laughs> so I took a walk, and the melody that came to my mind was, were you there when they crucified the Lord? But the words that came to me were, I was there when they crucified the Lord. And suddenly, I burst out laughing. Because for four one-hour periods, I was looking at that crucifix and saying, Lord, don't look at me laugh like that. I didn't do it. <laughs> don't look at me like that. I didn't do it. I said, yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. And so, anyway, I took it to my spiritual director, and he said, now tonight... I want you to picture being in the home of Mary on the night of the crucifixion and let her console you. And I said, no, you mean let me console her. <laughs> she, he said, no, she doesn't need it, you do. <laughs> so I thought to myself, how am I going to um, speak to her if I nail her son to the cross, if I murder her son? And so I was trying to picture her, and before I could even picture her, it was as if she opened up the conversation and she said, Bob, you didn't murder my son. He died out of love for you. Come here often. I'd like to teach you about that love. And I thought, wow, this is the unwounded friend and mother we all have. And so, Mary, today we say happy birthday and thanks so much for saying yes to be the mother of your son, our Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.